Good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, noon by Y Watch, so we're going to get started. Um, although I know we are probably going to expect a few people to trickle in as we get going, so that's okay. Uh, welcome to Cancer Care Manitoba's webinar, Is Your Patient Fit for Fit? An overview for fecal immunochemical testing for colorectal cancer screening in Manitoba. Today, we are very excited to be launching a new colon cancer screening test for Manitobans, one that we think will reduce mortality from the disease. And it's great to see so many people uh, joining us today. My name is Kelly Bunzelak, and I am the Director of Prevention and Screening at Cancer Care Manitoba, and I will be the moderator for today's webinar. Uh, do you mind advancing the slides, please? I think there was. Uh, so just before we start, I'd like to acknowledge that we're located on Treaty 1 territory. It is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabeg, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. Um, as a settler here, I'm grateful to be able to work and play in this beautiful place and to have the opportunity to raise my children in an area with lots of fresh water and forests. And I take my responsibility to protect this land and to help others who do so seriously. I'm also committed to listening to Indigenous communities and helping to run programs that improve outcomes for Indigenous people. Uh, we're hopeful that the FIT program we're launching today will improve access and reduce inequities in screening, but we know that work remains to ensure everyone can access screening and the follow-up that they need. And so I will continue to listen, to learn, to work towards, and to be accountable to my responsibilities while on this land and through this work. Um, and of course, before we begin, we're sort of required to go through a few administrative items. Uh, so first, please note that this webinar is being recorded so that we can make it available after today. Uh, within the next few weeks, it will be available on the Cancer Care Manitoba website, and so you'll be able to access it there if you want to go back. Uh, second, this group learning program has been certified by the College of Family Physicians of Canada and the Manitoba chapter for up to one main pro credit. Uh, after you complete the webinar evaluation, you will be sent a certificate of participation, which the college requires you to retain for up to six years. And finally, we've saved the last 15 minutes of the webinar for a question and answer session. We've already received a number of questions that we will be answering during the webinar. But if anything else comes up during the presentation or after it, please add it to the Q&A box. So the Q&A box is at the bottom of your screen. Um, it's well, it says Q&A, so that's the way to find it at the bottom. Um, and if we run out of time and for all of your questions, we will prepare a written response that uh, we'll do our best during the presentation. And so now onto the presentation for today's webinar, we have four learning objectives. By the end of this session, we hope that you will be able to explain the changes to colorectal cancer screening in Manitoba discuss the potential benefits and risks of FIT for colon cancer screening, identify who is eligible for colorectal cancer screening and how they can access the test, and finally, access more information about colon check and FIT when you need it. Um, so we have three speakers today uh, to help us go through those objectives. So first up, we have Laura Coulter, who's the screening program manager at Cancer Care Manitoba. She will be followed by Dr. Ross Stimson, who is the uh, Colin Check's medical lead, and Dr. Ian Wetter, who's a primary care provider at Northern Connection Medical Center and the medical lead at Anonymous Health Services. So now I will pass it over to Laura, who's going to be talking about the new fit kit and patient navigation. Uh, great, Kelly, thank you. Uh, so on behalf of Colon Check Cancer Care Manitoba, I just want to thank everybody for joining this afternoon's presentation on how fit fits in Manitoba. So I'm going to start by doing my disclosure, which I want to disclose that my relationship with the financial support sponsors that I am an employee of Cancer Care Manitoba, I have none to disclose of financial dis support and nor do I have any mitigating potential biases. So Dr. Stimson, Dr. Wetter and I are here to speak to you on the exciting changes to colorectal cancer screening currently taking place in Manitoba. But before we begin, I just wanna set the stage by reviewing some of the fundamentals of an organized cancer screening program. So what is cancer screening? Similar to any other screening test, cancer screening looks for diseases in people who have no signs or symptoms of the disease. And the goal is to find cancer in its earliest stages when the treatment plan may be simpler or in some cases such as cervical or colorectal, prevent the disease from occurring through early detection and treatment or removal of precancerous lesions. 
um, sorry, um, essential to the success of the cancer, screen, um, cancer screening is routine participation. And this is where an organized population-based approach comes in. The foundations of an organized population-based screening program is to benefit the population it is trying to reach and not just focusing on one individual within the population. It enlists a coordinated approach to invite eligible people to participate, communicate test results, arrange follow-up and treatment in abnormal results, and re-invite eligible persons when they are due to repeat their screening test. Governed by cancer screening guidelines, a screening program systematically fo focuses on improving access and equity within a target population identified as being at most risk of getting the disease and benefit most from routine testing. A screening test is used to detect early signs of cancer, such as abnormal cells in a pap test or areas of concern on a mammogram. As defined by the WHO in their paper on the principles and practices of screening for disease, a successful cancer screening test should be acceptable to the population in that it's easy to use and tolerable to complete, and that the cost of providing the screening test should not be more than the treatment of the disease it is screening for. Cancer screening tests are not diagnostic tests and they should not be used in people showing signs or symptoms of the disease that you're investigating or in those at high increased risk due to family history or as a replacement as a diagnostic test. So since 2008, Cancer Care Manitoba's colon check program has been the provincial colorectal cancer screening program. In addition to managing the province's colorectal cancer screening registry, we've been distributing colorectal cancer screening tests to eligible Manitobans 50 to 74 years of age. And as many of you are aware, the colon cancer screening test in Manitoba has been the fecal occult blood test or FOBT. But I'm excited to share that effective June 20th, 2023, the province has transitioned to the fecal immunochemical test, more commonly known as FIT. So FIT implementation is the first step in establishing a province-wide colorectal cancer screening pathway. Other components include centralized distribution and analysis of FIT kits and management by colon check, as mentioned previously, the provincial colorectal cancer screening program operating under the banner of Cancer Care Manitoba. This comprehensive clinical practice change <clears throat> is designed to support patients and their healthcare providers in accessing timely and appropriate colorectal cancer screening, improve on early detection and treatment of colorectal cancer, reduce mortality from the disease, and create overall efficiencies within the healthcare system. <clears throat> I'm just going to take a few moments to review each of the key components of this clinical practice change, starting with FIT, the colorectal cancer screening test that kick-started the whole initiative. Although FOBT has been successfully used in Manitoba for many years, FIT is based on newer technologies and is wildly preferred across the country due to its sensitivity and its accept acceptance by the population. Similar to the FOBT, FIT looks for blood and stool as an early sign of colorectal cancer or precancer cancerous adenomas. It's an easy use test and it requires only one sample, has no medication or dietary restrictions before or during the testing interval. Later in this presentation, Dr. Stimson is going to spend a little bit more time on the benefits of FIT use in colorectal cancer screening. I'll just wait for the slide to change. Thank you. Um, historically, there were three access streams to colorectal cancer screening in Manitoba, the population-based ma ma mail-outs through colon check and through healthcare provider requisitions to Dynacare or Shared Health Lab. Uh, correspondingly, there were three labs analyzing the test kit kits, CADM, Dynacare, and Shared Health, and a couple of testing platforms. These access streams made it very difficult to ensure equity across the province, evaluate the quality of testing, and effectively measure the impact of routine colorectal cancer screening. So under the new provincial model, distribution is going to be centralized under Cancer Care Manitoba's colon check program, and laboratory analysis will be under CADM Provincial Lab. 
This process allows for a single act point of access to fit for clients and healthcare providers, provides consistent and equitable delivery across the province as all Manitobans will receive the same high quality fit kit. Quality controls and assurances are gonna be enhanced by a single lab source. Uh, provincial evaluation and reporting on the effectiveness of cancer screening and early detection, and ultimately overall healthcare savings through a streamlined operation. So for cancer screening to be effective, it's critical that screening and surveillance intervals are adhered to and abnormal follow-up is managed appropriately. Under this new provincial mo model, Manitobans will benefit from an organized population-based screening approach that's managed by Colon Check Cancer Care Manitoba, guided by colorectal cancer screening guidelines and supported by the colorectal cancer screening registry that contains demographic information and colorectal screening histories for all Manitobans 35 years of age and older. This ensures that only eligible persons are sent to FIT, allowing for increased equitable access to FIT testing. Completed uh, tests will be analyzed by CADM Lab. CADM Lab will be communicating test results to healthcare providers, and Colon Check will be communicating the FIT result to their patients. If the FIT is a normal test result, your patient will be automatically sent a FIT in two years until they reach the age of 75. If the fit is abnormal, colon check will make the referral for follow-up colonoscopy. And if after investigation, your patient is determined eligible to return to fit testing, colon check will automatically send your patient to test in five to 10 years. But if after investigation, your patient is determined ineligible to return to fit testing, colon check will send you and your patient a fail-safe reminder letter when it is time to return back to colonoscopy. Fit tests will not be sent to those patients. As colorectal cancer screening data will flow through one registry system, we will have the benefit of completing evaluation and data quality checks to maintain a high level of service and be able to support you in your practice by inviting and recalling your patients and providing you with up-to-date screening histories. So as mentioned in the previous slide, Colon Check will be making referral for your patients having an abnormal FIT result. Our process will be that we will phone your patient, advising them of their abnormal result, and schedule a pre-procedure health assessment with the program's nurse practitioner. A result letter will follow this phone call. In addition to determining procedural readiness, the nurse practitioner will review bowel prep procedure, um, pardon me, bowel preparation for the procedure and advise on what to expect on the colonoscopy, arrange for any required blood work, and answer any questions that they might have. Following this appointment, the referral will be made following the provincial endoscopy referral process. Colon Check will advise healthcare providers that a referral has been made for their patient and indicate where the colonoscopy is taking place. All procedural and pathology reports will be copied to the healthcare provider. Following the colonoscopy, the patient's TART within Colon Check will be updated to establish that they're appropriate to return to FIT screening in the future and all final outcomes, such as said eligibility, will be provided in a letter form to the provider and to their healthcare provider. So thank you for listening to this exciting uh, change that uh, we're announcing here in the province. And, and at this time, I'd like to pass the mic to Dr. Stimson, uh, medical lead for Colon Check Cancer Care Manitoba. Thank you very much, Laura. These are my disclosures. I'm the medical lead for uh, Cancer Care Manitoba. In terms of financial support, I get remuneration from uh, Colon Check Cancer Care Manitoba and also from Shared Health Manitoba as a provincial medical lead for GI endoscopy. There are no other mitigating potential biases. Just a few things about our FIT implementation in, in Manitoba here. <clears throat> in terms of programmatic uh, approach to this, uh, these are some of our goals and some of the benefits. Uh, we want to provide fit to all eligible individuals. We want to reduce the incidence of colorectal cancer and mortality as well too. Uh, with the new test and its an improved uh, sensitivity, we hope to improve advanced adenoma or cancer precursor uh, detection. We want to limit access for inappropriate indications or ineligible individuals who won't benefit from the use of the test. And we also want to encourage uh, program participation participation and uh, develop a system for recall reminder for screening and uh, surveillance. We will have an automated recall for fit and average risk individuals and for individuals at increased risk 
uh, either due to uh, findings on colonoscopy or through family history, we will provide reminders and where appropriate fit. We want to promote adherence to screening guidelines and also support the central endoscopy intake in the uh, province. We also want to reduce the number of low yield uh, colonoscopies. These are procedures where there is very little chance of, of finding significant uh, pathology. And in cases where it's appropriate, we will use a fit replacement. We also want to allow for patient choice when possible. That is the ability to choose a fit over colonoscopy if it's appropriate. The old test we used was the uh, GUIAC FOBT. Um, it has lower compliance due to the restrictions. Multiple samples are needed. Uh, it, uh, there is interference with animal blood or gastric blood and also peroxidases in food. It was a qualitative analysis, which made it very difficult uh, sometimes. Uh, also was poor sensitivity for advanced adenomas. It is also not specific for colonic bleeding. With the new introduction of the uh, FIT test here, studies have shown that there is increased compliance. There's no interference with any other uh, types of blood. It's specific for human blood. It's a quantitative analysis that allows control of a positive cutoff. It has improved sensitivity for cancers as well as advanced adenomas, the cancer precursors. It also detects only colonic bleeding for the most part, and there's no medication or dietary interference. This is a summation of uh, multiple studies looking at fit sensitivity in terms of cancer for average risk individuals. This was compiled in the Annals of Internal Medicine in 2014. It's important to note that the test is a highly sensitive test. Overall, the sensitivity was 77% with a specificity of 94%. And this sensitivity was actually confirmed by colonoscopy findings, individuals with a positive test and without a positive test. Just want to provide some of the more recent uh, data that's uh, become available over the last uh, decade in terms of fit and the ability to reduce mortality, also to reduce the incidence of colorectal cancer. This is a very uh, large study here with over 5 uh, million patients by uh, Chu from uh, Taiwan. They used a 100 nanogram cutoff. There was a reduced incidence of advanced stage colorectal cancer by 34 percent. It also reduced uh, cancer-related death by 40%. And this was after full adjustment for self-selection factors and the quality of colonoscopy. What this basically said is if you participated in the study and you had a good uh, colonoscopy in terms of quality and you agreed to go ahead with the procedures, you would get this mortality uh, reduction. Screening was also more effective at reducing incidence of advanced stage colorectal cancer and death from cancer in the distal colon rather than the proximal colon. And we see this in other studies as well too. Another study by Zorzi from my gut compared two populations of patients, those from 2006 to 2011 with an earlier population from 1995 to 2000. They found that uh, from the early stage uh, adopters of colorectal cancer screening, there was a reduction in mortality uh, in, in coming apart of about 22% in the future. And this effect occurred earlier than uh, guaiac FOBT. A recent study from uh, Kim, <clears throat> population-based uh, case control study, we looked at uh, colonoscopy as well as fit testing and the ability to reduce the incidence of colorectal cancer. Colonoscopy was associated with reduced subsequent CRC risk uh, quite substantially, about the range of about 71%. There were strong associations were found between colonoscopy and again, distal colorectal cancers compared with uh, proximal. Any fit exposure was associated with reduction risk and an odds ratio of about uh, 0.74. This is a reduction of about 26% in incidence. As the frequency of cumulative fit assessments increased from one to greater than five, the odds ratio of fit exposure and uh, incidence of colorectal cancer gradually decreased from 0.81 to 0.45, which is actually a reduction in incidence of about 55%. And again, the association of colonoscopy or fit with reduced colorectal cancer risk was stronger for distal cancers. One other study in the British Journal of Surgery and Intention to Screen study, again, using a cutoff of 100 nanograms for ML. They looked at pool data in years for men, women, and also the combined results. And overall, this showed a stable 28% decrease in the an annual CRC incidence after eight years.
So <clears throat> colon check in terms of positivity, we've selected a value of 100 nanograms per ml. The test that we will be using is the uh, PolyMedco OC Auto test. This cutoff value of 100 nanograms is, is uh, pretty consistent with what other screening programs in Canada have done. Uh, the cutoff, of, of course, determines the sensitivity for cancer and advanced adenoma detection. It also determines the positivity rate. If we set a value that's uh, very low, we'll get a very high positivity rate. And again, a decreased uh, positive predictive value for serious pathology. So we need to sort of create a balance between the, between the needs of the program for cancer detection versus colonoscopy capacity and resources and potential harm to patients in the uh, system. And again, as uh, shown earlier, the benefits of screening are cumulative and increase with repeat testing. What are the potential harms of FIT screening? Well, false positive uh, resulting from um, low specificity. This would increase colonoscopy demand, create a high uh, positivity value. This can of course lead to colonoscopy complications and patient uh, discomfort. False negatives or low sensitivity results in poor adenoma and, and cancer uh, detection and also increased uh, interval cancers. These are cancers that occur between uh, screening episodes. Also false reassurance in individuals. We do not advise the use of fit screening for symptomatic patients. We do not advise its use in diagnostic uh, testing. Also colorectal cancer testing can cause some distress due to the testing results, uh, follow-up colonoscopy and some anxiety in terms of waiting for results. So how do we determine risk for colorectal cancer? Well, it's fairly standard. We look at the age of the individuals, family history of individuals, in particular individuals with uh, one or more first degree uh, relatives, personal history of any uh, significant disease, and again, uh, whether that individual is symptomatic. So average risk, we define this as ages 50 to 74, nor pers no personal history of cancer or precancerous uh, polyps, that is advanced adenomas, no history of inflammatory bowel disease, and no suspect genetic syndrome such as FAP or Lynch syndrome. No significant first degree family history of colorectal cancer. Uh, however, average risk also does include one or more second degree relatives with a history of colorectal cancer. These individuals we treat as uh, average risk. And in this group, we advise colorectal screening every two years with FIT. One of the considerations that's come up is that of overage screening, that is providing the test for older individuals. Uh, there's pretty good data to show now that with the older age, there's an increased risk of complications, morbidity, particularly related to colonoscopy with increasing age. Uh, the test has less benefit in individuals over 74 years of age, particularly where they've had negative uh, screening encounters and have a negative uh, screening history. It's unlikely to benefit when life expectancy is less than 10 years. And again, individual comorbidities can negate the benefits. Uh, several guidelines have come out in the last uh, few years looking at overage uh, screening. In 2016, the Canadian Task Force recommended against screening individuals 75 years of age and older. The US Multi-Society Task Force in 2017 suggested those that are up to date with screening and have had negative prior screening tests, particularly colonoscopy, consider stop screening at age 75 or when life expectancy is less than 10 years. The US uh, Preventive Services Task Force in 2021 recommended that clinicians selectively offer screening for colorectal cancer in individuals that are over age, that is over age 74, 75, up to 85 years of age. Uh, overall, the evidence, however, suggests that the net benefit in this group is very small. In adults 86 years of age or older, evidence on benefits and harms of colorectal cancer screening is lacking, and who competing causes of mortality likely preclude any survivor benefit. So in keeping with this, we have modified our average risk uh, screening uh, guidelines. We now, as uh, per the, the recommendations, recommend only selective screening individuals 75 to 85 uh, years of age. And this should be done on a case-by-case -case, uh, basis uh, based on their family history, past screening history, and any comorbidities. Overall, these patients do not benefit that much. Uh, over 86 years of age, uh, we do not recommend screening and will not be providing tests in this age group. 
These are some of the uh, recommendations for individuals with one first degree uh, relative to colorectal cancer diagnosed at a later age. And the age cutoffs are somewhat different. These are four major organizations here, uh, Cancer Council of Australia, British Society of Gastroenterology, US Multi-Society Task Force, and the European uh, um, Gastrointestinal uh, Society. So what they're basically recommending here is individuals with uh, one first degree relative over uh, 50 to 60 should be considered uh, average risk. <clears throat> and they all basically recommend a fit in this uh, age group, except for the US uh, task force, which does uh, consider colonoscopy a reasonable alternative as well, but only over 10 years, essentially making these individuals average risk. So this is just uh, part of our guidelines here for one first degree relative diagnosis of cancer at over age 60. Uh, we recommend uh, fit every two years as an alternative to colonoscopy, which is the uh, standard recommendation. If one or more first degree relatives are diagnosed with advanced adenomas, again, we offer fit as an alternative in this age group to uh, colonoscopy. And this is becoming a, a more common recommendation. However, for individuals with a uh, more serious uh, degree of uh, involvement of first degree relatives with colorectal cancer, that is those with one first degree relative who were diagnosed with cancer under age 60, or two or more that were diagnosed at any age, we do recommend uh, colonoscopy and fit is not an alternative. This is a summation of our new uh, colon check uh, surveillance uh, guidelines here. Uh, we do have a fit option for individuals with what we consider to have low risk adenomas. This is one to two tubular adenomas without high grade dysplasia and all less than uh, one centimeter. This is the only surveillance recommendation we have using uh, fit. We've changed the terminology for sesalcerated adenomas or polyps, we now refer to these as sesalcerated lesions in keeping with the World Health Organization's uh, classification of these lesions. We have lengthened some of the surveillance intervals on her here and divided this up into the number of uh, adenomas in keeping with uh, US guidelines uh, for surveillance. We've also lessened or increased the surveillance interval for those with three to four tubular adenomas. However, individuals with a large number of adenomas or advanced adenomas, which includes villus lesions or lesions larger than the centimeter or those with high-grade dysplasia or more severe degrees of uh, sessile serrated lesions, such as traditional serrated lesions, we have kept a three-year uh, surveillance interval. We can provide these references to anybody that's interested. So this is just a summation of where we uh, use FIT here. Again, average risk. Uh, first degree relatives who develop cancer older than 60, one or more relatives with documented advanced adenomas or low risk adenomas. And all other circumstances for screening and surveillance, colonoscopy is the test. And just uh, before I close here, just a few words in our colon check increased uh, risk management uh, protocol here. Um, over the last year, we've been trying to define, define and identify personal risk factors uh, from patients uh, based on their own personal risk factors, as well as a family health history, the increase in individuals' risk of cancer. We have tried to uh, personalize the uh, pathways for these individuals based on these risk factors. And we have tried to integrate um, these risk factors into determining whether these individuals would benefit from uh, future screening with FIT or colonoscopy, and we've combined this with the colonoscopy findings. We've incorporated the colon check screening and surveillance guidelines to provide individualized future screening and reminder letters for surveillance recommendations. We will also provide a fail-safe uh, kit uh, when appropriate. So this is our increased uh, results summary for individuals with either normal or abnormal FIT test. In individuals with a normal FIT, if they're average risk, they get a repeat test in two years. If they're increased risk, of course, there's no follow-up colonoscopy. However, we will make recommendations in regards to whether their follow-up should include colonoscopy based on high-risk family history or FIT as a, an alternative in low increased risk situations. For abnormal FITs, whether they're average or increased risk due to family history, of course, they would go on to a colonoscopy and the recommendations would be based not only in the colonoscopy findings, but also on the family history risk level. So this is our um, algorithm for colonoscopy follow-up at different uh, levels of risk. 
individuals that go for a colonoscopy, if it's normal and their average risk, they return to screening in 10 years. If it's normal, but they're deemed to be increased risk by family history, they could receive a fit if it's a low increased risk family history with one member or colonoscopy surveillance, depending on the uh, severity of the family history. Where there's abnormal findings on colonoscopy and their average risk, uh, colonoscopy or fit would be recommended depending on the uh, findings. And if they're increased risk, again, we would meld the findings in the colonoscopy with the family history and provide appropriate uh, recommendations for either fit or colonoscopy. And we would communicate this to the uh, providers. Thank you very much. I'd now like to uh, introduce Dr. Ian Wetter. He's a family physician at Northern Connection Medical Center and is the medical lead at Angamaswin Health Services. And he will share information about how to access FIT, um, answer any commonly asked uh, questions by healthcare providers, and provide more information on how to get uh, additional data on FIT. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Stimson. So yes, I'm a family doctor at Northern Connection, and I uh, just uh, wanted to disclose my financial relationship. So I don't have any financial relationship with the sponsors. I did receive some financial support from the City of Winnipeg and Doctors Manitoba in the form of an honorarium for some anti-racism training that I redirected to some uh, local organizations uh, in Winnipeg, and I don't have any other mitigating potential bias. So I would like to talk a little bit about uh, how to access the FIT test. Uh, and this is uh, um, going to be a change. Um, some of you may remember the days when we had FOBT tests uh, in our clinics. Uh, we will not have those anymore. And that uh, is going to be for the purposes of making sure that there's central organization and central registry of the uh, FIT testing program. So the main way that patients are going to access FIT is going to be colon check recruitment and retention processes. And so the uh, colorectal cancer screening database registry will be used to uh, make sure that uh, these kits get out to patients. Uh, if you've got a patient who comes to you who either didn't receive their kit or lost their kit, uh, the healthcare provider can request it uh, through a request form in the EMR. That uh, request form is also on the cancer care website. And the third way is that patients can self-request. So a patient who wants to be screened, but either can't get into their primary care provider or doesn't ha have a primary care provider, doesn't need a referral, and they can either do that uh, online through the Cancer Care website or over the phone uh, by calling 1-855-95-CHECK. So those are the three ways to access the FIT test. Next slide, please. So in the kit, the FIT kit, there will be a letter uh, of a welcome and introduction. There will be an insert that uh, is translated. Currently it is translated and I'll probably need the system to remind me what it's translated into. It's in English and French. And I know that it's in the process of being translated into uh, some indigenous languages. Oh, sorry. And that insert is actually in 20 languages. Thank you, Leslie. Uh, there is the return form uh, that will be sent back with the kit. There will be the FIT test itself, a uh, little plastic uh, uh, tube. There's a plastic bag with absorbent paper. There's tissue paper for the toilet bowl. There's a brochure explaining the, the test, as well as the instructions for the test and a return envelope. Next slide, please. Uh, and so in those FIT instructions, um, you can sort of see them on the screen here. I'll highlight a couple of key features of it. Um, in order to um, get a better view of this uh, and take a look at it, you can see the PDF on the Cancer Care website. There are also uh, videos. The videos are in English and French, right? And the and Indigenous languages to come. Once the kits are completed, and this is the piece that I wanted to highlight, there are three ways to get them back uh, to the lab for processing. One is to uh, drop them at the post office. Uh, the second is to take them to a lab near you. And there's a link on the instructions for bringing them to the lab or for people living in uh, northern remote communities. Uh, the results or the test can be brought to the nursing station or the health center, uh, and they will be submitted uh, by the nursing station through the usual channels uh, to a shared health lab. And, um, oh, sorry, to the CADM lab, my apologies. Uh, and I did want to, to point out uh, here that the test does need to be dropped off within two days of collecting the sample. Uh, 
Thank you very much. And so in terms of the, the uh, results pathway, the lab will analyze the kit uh, uh, using uh, the fit test and the return form. So both of those will need to be returned uh, to the lab. And then there will be uh, a variety of possible quantitative results. And those results will either be uh, normal, abnormal, indeterminate, canceled, or invalid. And I'll talk a little bit about those in a moment. Uh, those results will go uh, uh, from the lab via fax to the primary care provider. Um, and that is the primary care provider that the patient has indicated on the return form. Uh, they will also be uploaded via the Cancer Care Manitoba Registry and the Cancer Care Manitoba will notify the patient. Next slide, please. And so in terms of those uh, qualitative results that I had mentioned, so a normal result, uh, what it means is that there was insufficient blood in the stool to meet the threshold cutoff for detection. So meaning uh, there, there wasn't uh, colonic blood in the stool or not enough to meet the cutoff uh, level. And in that case, colon check will send the patient a letter with the result and will remind the patient to be screened again in two years if the patient is still eligible. In the case of an abnormal result, that means there is blood detected in the stool above the threshold or cutoff for detection. Uh, the lab will send the results to the provider. Sorry, in all cases, the lab will send the result to the provider and colon check will contact the patient by phone to discuss the result and refer for colonoscopy. They will send the patient a letter with the result and they will notify the provider of the colonoscopy referral. In the case that the result is indeterminate, this means that the lab was not able to provide a result. Um, and in the case that it is canceled, this means the lab was not able to analyze due to missing patient identifiers. And in the case of an invalid result, this means the lab analyzed the test, but again, could not provide a result. And in that case, the lab will send the results to the provider. And in all of those three cases, uh, colon check will send the patient another kit to repeat the collection. Next slide, please. So we've had a series of questions from providers, uh, and I can see that there are a number of questions emerging in the question and answer section. And so we'll try to get to those uh, in the last 15 minutes of our presentation, but I'll go through the, the questions that we had in advance. So next slide, please. So uh, first question is, how can I find out when my patient was last screened for colorectal cancer? So this is a patient who comes into your office, can't remember when they last had their screening done, and you're trying to sort out, do I need to screen them now? Have they already been recently screened? They might be a new patient in your practice. And you can, in uh, similarly to the cervix check uh, screening history, you can request a colon check history uh, with the form found on the Cancer Care Manitoba website and uh, send that to colon check and they will uh, send you the person's colon check screening history, including um, FOBT, FIT and colonoscopy screening. Next slide, please. Uh, how will the lab notify me of my patient's result? So the, when the patient completes the form, uh, the test return form, they will list their provider on the form. And it's a fairly small font here, but there is the provide your healthcare providers contact information on the form. Uh, the lab will fax the results to the provider listed on the form. And the, these results will not be in e-chart at this time. So if you've got a patient who comes and you're unsure of their screening history, that's the time to use the colon check history form. Uh, you can't look and find these in e-chart. Thank you. Next slide, please. So here's just a sample of one of the lab reports for an abnormal result. You'll see a specimen note there that says the patient has identified you as their healthcare provider. The result, so you'll see FICO immunochemical test fit, abnormal, and the date it was approved. And then underneath, there will be an explanation of what will be happening with each of the patients. So I know in Dr. Stimson's presentation, there's a lot of detail about what will be happening based on the risk of each patient. This really gives you the explanation of what the plan will be. And so in this case, colon check will be calling your patient to advise the abnormal result and initiate referral to colonoscopy. All procedural reports will be copied to your office. A patient is at average risk for colon cancer determined from self-report, personal and family history, and then uh, for more information on the colon cancer screening uh, eligibility and guidelines, visit Cancer Care Manitoba. Next slide, please. 
uh, in the result of an, indeter the, an indeterminate result, uh, you'll see a note there. And this will be in the case of a corrected result. So for example, in this case, uh, it has a note stating corrected, previously reported as normal. And then underneath it says indeterminate result previously reported as fit normal. Normal result cannot be confirmed as directed by Cancer Care Manitoba and colon check advising patient of result and sending a repeat fit. Next slide, please. Can my patient be referred to the endoscopist of my choice? Uh, so this would be a case in which uh, you had a particular endoscopist that you wanted the patient referred to or the patient had expressed a uh, desire to have a particular endoscopist. And in this case, uh, colon check will be making direct referral for all participants having an abnormal result. Uh, the referrals are processed according to the current practices utilizing the shared health endoscopy intake referral form. And so if you would like your patient referred to a specific endoscopist or clinic, you'd need to contact colon check and let them know of which specific endoscopist you would like your patient to see. Next slide, please. If my patient's kit expires or is lost or damaged, how can they get a new one? Uh, so patients can request a new kit, as I had previously mentioned, by going online to Cancer Care Manitoba uh, and the colon check website and clicking the replacement kit box, um, or they can call colon check at the phone number listed there. Next slide, please. So will fit kits continue to be available from our local lab? So the answer to this is no. So because we wanted central registry of the uh, fit program, uh, they can use the colon check FOBT requisition form to request a fit for the patient from colon check. So in that case, if you would like a form, you can go ahead and request that uh, either through the EMR or using the form from the cancer care website. Next slide, please. Can I analyze my patient's kit at our clinic lab? So uh, many of you will remember uh, the times when we used to hijack the FOBT kits much to the, the chagrin of uh, cancer care and the colon screening program. Uh, so in this case, uh, we, these will not be analyzed locally. Uh, all the specimens will be sent uh, to the CADA Provincial Laboratory. And the reason for this is because of the very careful follow-up that cancer care will be doing for these kits. Uh, we need the results to be registered through CADM Lab and through the colon check registry in order to make sure that appropriate referrals, risk screening, and uh, referrals on to colonoscopy occur. Next slide, please. How do I facilitate transportation for my patient's colonoscopy? So colon check does not facilitate transportation. Uh, colon check will send an appointment letter to the patient and their provider as the patient indicated when they did the fit. And in First Nations communities, if the patient identifies the nursing station nurse in charge as their provider on the return form, colon check will send a copy of the appointment letter to the nursing station nurse in charge. The nurse in charge will arrange travel for the day before the colonoscopy to allow the patient time to do the bowel prep and then notify the patient of the travel plan. Uh, this will be really a standard approach uh, as was previously uh, uh, done in First Nations communities and in rural and remote communities they will follow the regional transportation policy used for any follow-up test. So nothing new there. Next slide, please. Many of my patients are unlikely to complete an online request for fit. How can I facilitate access in my office? So these are patients who are either not particularly tech savvy or don't have access to a computer. Um, and so as a reminder, colon check will invite each person by mail once they're eligible to participate and on the new fit request form, there is a box that you can check to have the kit sent either to the patient or to the provider. So if you've got a patient who is transiently housed uh, or is uh, living at no fixed address, uh, you can get the, fo the form sent to the provider or the fit kit, sorry, sent to the provider. And any clinician can complete the request on behalf of their patient. This can be a physician, a physician assistant, a nurse, a nurse practitioner, or a clinical assistant. Next slide, please. Uh, so just a, a question uh, came about with regards to the previous dietary restrictions related to the FOBT test. And a reminder, uh, I think both Laura and Dr. Stimson spoke to this, which is one of the benefits of the FIT test is that there aren't any uh, dietary or medication restrictions. And so if my patient is taking iron supplements, will this impact the FIT result? And the answer is no. Next slide, please. What do we do if we need to test stool for occult blood for reasons other than screening? 
So I want to spend a little bit of time speaking to this one because I just want to be very, very clear that the FIT test um, with colon check is for the purpose of cancer screening. If a patient presents uh, with symptoms, so if a patient presents with melina or weight loss or bright red blood per rectum, uh, that is not a reason to do a FIT test. So the FIT test uh, with colon check is for cancer screening. At the point where you've got symptoms indicating concern, you're no longer in the realm of screening and you're now in the case of diagnostics or case finding. And in those scenarios, uh, you, you're really going to have to use your clinical judgment. So uh, I personally, if I had a patient come into my uh, practice who had concerns with regards to Molina, I wouldn't care what the result of an in-clinic uh, uh, FOBT test was. I would be referring that patient on for further investigation. And you're going to use your own clinical judgment in those scenarios. There are uh, av available from a variety of medical supply companies, um, uh, a point of care fecal blood tests. If your clinic or your team decides that that is something that you need, uh, you would be free to order those, but it wouldn't be appropriate to use colon checks fit testing for that reason. Next slide, please. If my patient is unwilling to proceed through the entire screening process, including colonoscopy, should I recommend a FIT? And the answer to that is no. So we really need to think about FIT as the beginning of a complex screening process uh, that would include uh, referral on to colonoscopy and referral on to uh, uh, cancer treatment or surgical uh, interventions if needed. And so, this is really an opportunity to have a uh, really personalized conversation with your patient about their goals, uh, what they would hope to achieve from uh, this uh, screening test. And just the same as any other screening or diagnostic test, we need to prepare our patients for the fact that if the result of that test is positive, that, that would mean a referral on to further interventions. And we all know of patients who have very clearly told us that they wouldn't want to go on to further interventions. And as a result, we haven't ordered the initial uh, test. Next slide, please. So, can FIT be used instead of a colonoscopy for colorectal cancer screening? And the answer to that is really only when indicated. And Dr. Stimson uh, went through very clearly when those indications would be for the option of FIT testing versus colonoscopy. And I'll just turn it over to Dr. Stimson to see if there's anything more that he would like to say about that question. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ian. No, I think that's, that's absolutely correct. You know, colonoscopy obviously is a much more uh, sensitive test. It is recommended in uh, individuals that have uh, more severe degrees of, of family history, in particular, two or more first degree relatives with cancer or an individual, a first degree family relative who developed cancer at age uh, less than, than 60. In individuals with lesser degrees of family history, and that includes uh, second degree relatives or one first degree relative, but get her over 60, who developed cancer over 60, uh, fit would be appropriate in those individuals. And these recommendations uh, may change with time. Uh, some studies have shown that a fit is actually more predictive, a positive fit is more predictive of a disease than having a family history. So uh, we'll have to see how these uh, recommendations evolve with time. Thank you very much. Next slide, please. So just if you'd like more information about FIT, you can access it. Uh, the public can access it on the Cancer Care website and providers can access it also on the Cancer Care website through the screening guidelines. And if you'd like some resources for your clinic to explain uh, the FIT test or other cancer screening uh, through uh, Cancer Care Manitoba, you can go to the Cancer Care Manitoba website and order those for your clinic. And uh, now I think we are at the Q&A portion. And so I will ask the uh, panelists to turn on their cameras, please. And uh, we'll uh, try and work our way through the questions in the Q&A. I see there are 15 questions there now. I, could, I was kind of screening them as we were talking and some of them I think we've answered, um, but we can go through and uh, see if we can pick off the ones that have not yet been answered. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Rutter. And, and thank you, Dr. Stimson. And and Laura, um, I think we are going to move on to the Q&A session. There are a lot. Um, and like I said earlier, if we don't make it through all of the questions, we can post written responses. So, so don't fret about adding additional questions. If you have any, we will, we will get to them in some form of an, or another. Um, so just a reminder, you can put those in the, the Q&A box. And so maybe I'll start with a, a 
quick, short answered question for Laura, which is when will FIT be available? It's available now. So if you're looking for a test kit for your patient, you can send one of those uh, PCP request forms that Dr. Wetter talked about. It's available on our website. You can send them in and patients can start contacting Cancer Care Manitoba right now and we will send a FIT kit. Perfect, thank you. Um, okay, so there are a few questions. I'm gonna to try to group these a little bit related to over age screening. So specifically screening in people over age 74 and also over age 85. So uh, Dr. Simpson, if you don't mind answering, um, providing a little bit more background on whether those show folks should be screened and what do we do if we have a population? So the specific example given was the population of my clinic averages 80 and over, and they're very healthy and active. Well, um, in older individuals, the benefits of screening are substantially less. I mean, in particular, the number of uh, quality uh, adjusted life years remaining are actually fairly small. Um, we don't uh, recommend uh, screening in these elderly individuals. They unlikely to benefit. They're also more likely to have uh, complications from follow-up procedures like colonoscopy. And if they've been screened adequately up until that age, if they've had regular screening, they're less likely to benefit. The incidence of uh, cancer in these individuals is, uh, tends to be lower, despite the fact that the risk of colorectal cancer does increase with age. So we don't, we don't recommend uh, screening individuals uh, 86 of, years of age and older. Perfect, thank you. And now maybe just we'll switch to the younger population. So uh, two, two parts to this question. Um, people who get diagnosed with colon cancer in their 30s, why not include younger clients for screening is the first part. And the second one is in younger patients with a family history, which you've already address, but it, it might benefit a repeat. Yeah. <clears throat> so, I mean, we're a population-based uh, screening program. We have a uh, criteria for distributing the, uh, the test on a population basis. The incidence of uh, colorectal cancer overall in those individuals deemed to be average risk is quite low under age 45 in particular. There, there is some question as to whether in the future we should be reducing our age, average risk screening age from 50 to 45. Uh, th these are the recommendations in the, in the US right now from the multi-society task force. But overall, if we were mailing kits to individuals in their 30s, uh, first of all, uh, there would not be much benefit to this uh, population. Uh, we'd be doing uh, colonoscopies and unlikely to find any uh, serious uh, pathology and um, would create a lot of uh, create a lot of problems and expense in the system. If individuals have a, a significant uh, family history of an individual who developed colorectal cancer at a very young age and there's any question of the genetic cause of this, such as individuals with potential uh, Lynch syndrome or FAP, familial adenomatous uh, polyposis, that family should be, con should be referred and presumably was referred if they developed cancer at a very young age like that. Okay, thank you. And just um, on the same topic, if you don't mind clarifying how we define first degree relative, so everyone that's okay. using the same definition. <clears throat> Sorry, maybe I should have stated that. So first degree relative is either a, uh, is a parent, mother, father, a sibling, brother, sister, or a child, son or daughter. Perfect, thank you. Um, okay, maybe I will take a moment to switch to Laura and we've, we have already answered this, but I think we, we have a bit more of an update and that's about whether results will be available on e-chart. Thanks, Kelly. Um, they, we are planning to have them available on eChart, but that's going to be coming later on in the year. So until about December, we're going to be faxing results, and then there'll be an announcement made when they are available on eChart. So coming soon. Perfect, thank you. And, and while I've got you on screen, Laura, I wonder if you might talk a little bit about clients who do not have a healthcare provider. So what's the overall process for them? And then who do their procedure reports go to? 
Okay, good question. Thanks, Kelly. Um, two ways. Uh, first of all, a patient can contact Colon Check directly. They can self-refer themselves to have a test kit. And if they're eligible, we will send them a test kit. The other thing that Cancer Care Manitoba does is that all Manitobans upon reaching 50 years of age will be automatically sent a test kit from Colon Check. So if they're eligible, meaning that they haven't had a colonoscopy uh, within the last five years or completed a FIT or FOBT in the last two will be sent a, a, a FIT kit. If they complete that FIT kit, they will be continued to be recalled every two years, and that's regardless of having a healthcare provider. So we provide us a couple of ways of accessing test kits without having a, a regular provider they visit. And I'm just going to comment to you that if the patient does not either A, consent to having their results shared with their healthcare provider because they haven't indicated one on their return form, or they don't have a healthcare provider to have this test result reported to, the CADM lab will not be faxing out, of course, a, a test result because there is no provider to test it to. But I believe Dr. Wetter did say before that if you have a new patient visiting your clinic, we can provide colorectal cancer screening history on your new patient. And in the future, they will be accessed on uh, eChart. Perfect, thank you. Okay, so there are a few questions. Um related to people who recently completed an FOBT, so had an, a recent normal FOBT and what the process is, um, will they get one in two years? Uh, Laura, if you can maybe clarify that, or do they need a fit now? Uh, no, they would be considered up to date with their cancer screening. So when they're due to complete their next cancer screening interval in two years, that's when they should be doing a fit. If uh, the program, if they participated with the colon check program, we would automatically send them a fit when they become due to complete their next test. And we will also be assuming intervals of healthcare provider distributed fit tests. So if let's say you were to have given your patient a uh, FOBT last year, next year when they become due, the program will send them their uh, repeat test kit. Great, thank you. I'll give you a, a moment to take a break there and maybe turn to, to Ross or perhaps Ian for this one, which is uh, if we want to know if a patient's vomit contains blood or just coffee food, how will we test? I was hoping Ian would answer this one. I'm, ha I'm happy to, if you want. Um, yeah, so I think in that case, really it is, this is a moment of clinical judgment. So this is, as I hopefully made clear, this is not the purpose of uh, colon checks fit testing. Uh, it is a cancer screening program. So this is not a cancer screening question. And so I, I think, again, based on the risk factors for the patient, you're going to be making a clinical judgment, i.e. if you can't know if it is blood or coffee, but you've got some concerning uh, history, um, are you going to decide that you want to send that person to on for uh, endoscopy, gastroscopy or not? And secondly, if it's critical for you to have a test in your clinic to, to do the, the previous GOYAC uh, dip test, um, those are tests that your clinic can decide to order as a kind of point of care test in the same way that your clinic might decide to order a rapid strep screen or your clinic might de decide to order um, urine dipsticks. Uh, so if that is a test that your clinic would like to have on hand, uh, because it might increase uh, the likelihood that you're going to refer that person on. But again, I would use risk factors and clinical judgment ahead of a GUIAC dip test in order to make decisions about what I would do with that patient. Thank you. Um, and so I think we have time for one more question. So uh, maybe I will ask uh, this one of Laura, which is how long are FOBTs going to continue to be processed um, after they become unavailable? So, so what is the transition? There are a few questions about, is it a hard cutoff or a transition time? Thanks, Kelly. Um, I think that that answer comes maybe with three answers. Uh, if it's a colon check test kit, we are going to continue to analyze those test kits until such time that we don't have any analyzer left. We had stopped last week sending FOBT test kits out, so expect that those will dwindle in the next coming months. 
if a patient has completed an FOBT test and it's been sent to CADM lab, uh, when we run out of analyzer, CADM lab will communicate that to colon check and we are automatically going to send the patient a repeat fit test. So we'll get them on the right stream with a, a fit testing. Uh, if fit tests were distributed both from uh, Shared Health Lab and Dynacara Lab, uh, those ones I believe they will continue to analyze uh, sometime until September, uh, but beyond September months, uh, FOBT will, will no longer be available in the province. Uh, both labs have been provided with a letter that they can give their patient or the patient who is attended at the lab, indicating that the FOBT test has been replaced to FIT. And if they want to have a FIT test, they can either speak to their healthcare provider about requesting one for them or contacting colon checks so that we can send them out a test kit. Okay, thank you. And that is all the time we have today. So thank you to our speakers. We will go through the questions again, the ones we received before the webinar, as well as the ones we received during, uh, and compile them into written answers that we will post at cancercare.mb.ca, where you will also find this webinar posted in the next few weeks. So if you want to share it or review it, it will be available to you. Um, and if you think of any questions, please do email them to screening at cancercare.mb.ca and we can continue to build our um, FAQs as we go along. So we, we of course would appreciate your feedback uh, and we'll be sending you a short evaluation after the webinar. If you complete it and you want to request a certificate of participation, one will be sent to you. Uh, so thank you everyone for participating. It's great to see so many questions and so many people joining to learn about uh, the rollout of FIT. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thank you.